and that is then the end of the exposition. The development then works in the first section with the A theme. But then something happens in the middle of development, and that is the aspect that's kind of related to the trio idea, and that there's a tempo change, so it's, it's uh, a little broader. And a new theme is then stated in the key of D major. And so it stays in this key for a while. After the orchestra presents this new theme. It's a very um, exciting arrival point when that happens. And um, after this theme is stated, then there's a brief cadenza for the piano. Then when it shifts back to D minor, that's a brief retransition. And then you have the A theme and the recap. and the B theme, and then Coda. And so that's what you're going to hear with this. So at this recap, that's the place where the orchestra and the solos change parts. And you'll hear some hymnolas, which are typical of Brahms, you know. And um, this is a work that was written between 1878, 1881, it was premiered in Budapest. And Brahms was a soloist. And it's one of the biggest of the concerti. It takes about mm, over 45 minutes to perform this work. And so it's one of the very top of the literature. All right, that's the sort of bronze. I'll give you a few copies of these. These bronze scores are starting to disappear. So this is one of my favorite concertos. This is one I think you'll like the first time you hear it.
condescending thing. That's harpsichord, so that's a giveaway. Nobody should miss the Bach. Um, and then there are three piano concerto um, movements, or actually four movements, three piano concertos that uh, you'll have to identify. One's the Mozart D minor, and then two movements, second, third movement, the Beethoven fourth, and then the Brahms second, um, second movement of that. And then two violin concertos. So, um, just to go over the dates and everything real quickly, do you guys have any, are you missing any of the dates? So Bach, dates of his life, 1685 to 1750. And the Brandenburg Concerto is 1722. Um, for sure you should know Ritornello form. I'll ask you a question about that. What's the role of the Ripieno and the concertino in presenting and developing that Ritornello theme? So you should know those terms. Ripieno, which is the term for the orchestra, basically a string orchestra, and then concertino, which is the solo group. And that was the characteristic of a concerto grosso. It has a solo group. So you should know that the solo instruments in the Brandenburg Fifth are flute, violin, harpsichord. And it features an extensive harpsichord cadenza at the end of the movement. So be prepared to write something about Ritornello form as it's expressed in this movement. 
So can you tell me a little bit about that? So what did you hear? What was the role of the Ripiano? Ripiano just states the theme. So states the theme at the beginning and restates it at the end. <coughs> and throughout the movement keeps restating that same theme, that same Ritornello theme, just a portion of it. So that was that was the role of the orchestra. This reflects that basic concept, the, the theory of affections or doctrine of affections, that Baroque sensibility that only one theme should be presented per movement. That music has the power to affect the listener emotionally and that you shouldn't confuse the listener with several different emotions. You uh, should have one emotion and that in many ways um, is um, apparent in, in Baroque instrumental music for sure. So the role of the concertino in this is to then elaborate on the character of the theme and it will modulate in cadence and you just have a variety of keys then that the Ritornello theme is restated. So you should be able to talk a little bit about the beginning of the antiphonal style of writing. I talked about St. Mark's Basilica or St. Mark's Cathedral in Venice and the Venetian polychoral style that placed choirs in different parts of the, of the church or the cathedral. And you have this alternating bodies of sound. That's the basic idea behind a concerto. So you have the large group versus the solo group. And you should be able to talk about box music. So be able to give some good things to say there. Um, who was the musicologist who cataloged Bach's work in 1950? Schmieder. Schmieder, right, good. And that catalog is has what initials? BWB, good. So that indicates the Schmieder catalog of, of all the Bach works. Who was the great um, musician who reintroduced Bach in this famous concert in Leipzig in 1829. Mendelssohn, you should know that, St. Matthew Passion, that's a really landmark historic concert. So I know the places where Bach worked, so primarily Weimar and Curtin and then Leipzig and that appointment in Leipzig was as cantor, so the, the head musician for the church, the Protestant church, and so that's where Bach wrote his, his great cantatas, over 200 cantatas that are based on Lutheran chorales. So in a great look through, I guess I could ask you to write something about Bach. All right, then with Mozart, that, that concerto was from 1785. It's the D minor piano concerto. So one of only two of the 27 that are in minor keys. And 